So as uh, our transplant technologies and supportive care have gotten better over time, uh, the number of patients who can get through the early period of transplant, the first one or two years, where you have uh, the majority of non-relapse mortality and death because of relapses. So once you're over that period, uh, we've seen that the number of patients who can survive long-term beyond that is increasing over time. So once, so if you look at studies and you look at patients who are in, alive and in remission at two years post-transplant, you can expect 10 to 15 year survival beyond that of almost 80 to 90% depending on what your underlying diagnosis is. And uh, we've also estimated that there are going to be more and more of these survivors as we go forward, given the improvement and, uh, in, uh, in our transplantation, supportive care, technologies, and decrease in the rate of relapse. Uh, now the question that comes up is, how do you take care of these patients going forward? Because we recognize there are many barriers, both at the patient level and at the center level, that impact how these patients are cared for. We know that they are at high risk for late complications, like uh, second neoplasms, like uh, late infections, like late organ toxicity, uh, chronic graft versus host disease as well in patients who have it. Uh, but we've also recognized that it's a challenge to take care of these patients who go back to their homes, are far from the transplant centers, and have to have models of care where both the transplant center and local providers are engaged in their care. So as we think about this, we've, uh, uh, I've, I've always encouraged the, the concept of personalizing survivorship care, or what I would say precision survivorship care, which basically looks at what kind of exposures a patient has had. You know, so as a part of their transplant treatment, they got total body radiation, yes or no. Do they have chronic graft versus host disease, yes or no. What kind of transplant they've had, what age they are, and so forth and along with other risk factors which are not transplant related. Their prior comorbidities, I mean, are they smoking, were they a smoker in the past, what their uh, underlying genetic risk factors are, and how do you take all those exposures and then put them in a context where the survivorship care is personalized to a given patient's need. You know, so you can almost envision there will be patients who are quote unquote low risk, right, who've had an auto transplant or have had, had an allergenic transplant but no graft versus host disease, their care might be different in terms of survivorship versus what you might call a high-risk patient who has active chronic graft versus host disease. And uh, it all comes down to how you can look at those exposures, look at what the patient needs are, what the center resources are, and what can be offered from other centralized mechanism like the EBMT or the CIBMTR or the local uh, registries that can personalize that patient survivorship care.